Good afternoon and welcome to this time of worship and prayer together today. My name is Pam Smith and I'm the pastor here at Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lakeland, Florida. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to this service in which we are observing Lent 4. By way of a little bit of introduction, I confess to you that I am delightfully under the weather today. These last couple of days I have not been feeling well, and you might say, delightfully so? And it is a delight because the cause of my malaise is having received the second vaccination um, against the coronavirus. And so um, consider this my public service announcement to all of you who are considering whether to receive that or not. As we have gathered for worship these days during Lent, our theme has been even here, even here. I need my Mac to wake up. There it is. And even here in this year in which we have been living with the pandemic, loving our neighbor has meant giving up many things that we love, hasn't it? Even harder, loving our neighbor has meant giving up many social interactions that bring us joy. We've missed milestones in our lives and in the lives of our loved ones. We've tried to build a semblance of normal by cobbling together all manner of Facebook and digital and Zoom kinds of gatherings, whether it's fellowship hours, family dinners, worship services, any or all of the above. But if we're honest, it just isn't the same, is it? We aren't surrounded by laughter. We can't hug each other. And my friends, it's been about a year since I've had a homemade cookie. And so it is that today, indeed, we are mindful of the anniversary of when the World Health Organization pronounced the coronavirus as a pandemic. And this year has brought many, many different things to our awarenesses, many questions, and I believe an untold or an, even an unknown number of feelings and worries. For many people, the loneliness and isolation associated with quarantine and pandemic and shutdown and masks and all of that, that loneliness has eaten away at their core. And in this valley of Lent, we too find ourselves in a time maybe of loneliness, or I rather prefer aloneness. And this aloneness has not been easy. In fact, at times, it has been excruciating. And as you've heard me say before, while we enjoy those mountaintop experiences, a friend reminded me that it's in the valley that things grow. And so it is in this valley of Lent, in this valley of pandemic, we have become brave and kind and wise. <clears throat> and even here, we are learning to be better people, a better community. Even here, where everything is changing, we have opportunities to change as well. Even here, we are planting seeds that will sprout one day. Even here, God comes to us even here. God is not shut down because of pandemic. Even here, even now. Thank you, Dan. And so we begin. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Let those who know they are redeemed celebrate it, those who have been reclaimed from deep trouble. Though we were as good as dead, God made us alive with the grace of Christ, through whom we are rescued and healed. Oh, give thanks to God for such unswerving love, for such wonderful deeds for the children of the earth. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. Too often, too easily, our eyes are drawn down, O God, to the suffering of victims and the pain of perpetrators, to the wounds we inflict on others and the wounds we inflict on ourselves. We need to see these things and pray. But we also need our eyes to be lifted, God, to the signs of your life among us, to the touch of your healing on our souls, to the cross that casts its liberating shadow across all human affairs. We need our eyes to be lifted, God, so that our hearts may be filled with faith and hope and love. Amen. Our first psalm tonight is Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is gone, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are 70 years or perhaps 80 if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us, and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. Oh, prosper the work of our hands. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Our second psalm is Psalm 107. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. 
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. He satisfies the thirsty and the hungry he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in misery and in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. Their hearts were bound down with hard labor. They fell down with no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and gloom and broke their bonds asunder. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he shatters the doors of bronze and cuts in two the bars of iron. Some were sick through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love for his wonderful works to humankind, and let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep, for he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths, their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water, and there he lets the hungry live, and they establish a town to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing they multiply greatly, and he does not let their cattle decrease. When they are diminished and brought low through oppression, trouble, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. But he raises up the needy out of distress and makes their families like flocks. The upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness stops its mouth. Let those who are wise give heed to these things and consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Our reading tonight is from the third chapter of St. John. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These words from our reading tonight are very familiar to many of us. We see them, the reference to them on banners in the end zones of football games. We see people wear them on their hats or on their t-shirts. In fact, it's been called the gospel in the nutshell. And we know it well, and the words of it ring true. But I'd like for us tonight to move a little bit farther past that, down to the last verse of our reading. Those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. As I've reflected over this year of pandemic, I've thought about the number of lights that have gone out, the number of headlights that we don't see on the interstate, the number of lights in our movie theaters that are dark, the lights on Broadway that do not shine. And we've certainly heard things that do not reflect the light, haven't we? But yet, we have each been touched by light, whether that light has been a kind expression from another, whether that light has been a new image of part of God's natural creation, whether that light has been, at least in my case, the purr of a sweet cat on my lap. All of these are parts of and reflect the light of God. Now, what's important for me to remember with this is that I am not simply to be a recipient of this light. Rather, I am to share that light in fact, the Gospel of John goes on elsewhere to say, let your light, as Jesus is speaking to his followers, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. And so the challenge really then is, how is my life sharing, showing, revealing the light of God in Christ? It's challenging these days isn't it? And yet, as we've spoken about light and candles before, I want you in your mind's eye to imagine a room that is totally, totally dark. Get that image in your mind. And now I want you to take another image, and that's that Birthday, can birthday cake candle size, that one little candle, and put that into the room and see how that darkness changes, even from so little bit of a light. I've heard it spoken of um, a torture that was used in some of our wars in which prisoners of war were put into one of those rooms, one of those boxes that was totally, totally dark. And there was no sound and there was nothing. There was sensory deprivation, right? And the story is told of a prisoner who would search around the seams of that box, looking for a bit of an opening through which, through which a little bit of light would come in, and they would then have their bearings again. In this time of uncertainty and pandemic, in this time where could you even ever imagine that we would be saying that 525,000 people in our country would have died? Can you imagine 
Can you imagine the people who have suffered so because of this pandemic and its impacts financially and economically? In all of this, we search for that little seam of light and our lives may be just that one little candle that carries light to another. Light. Those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Here again, these words from Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble. We are the redeemed. We and all of God's beloved children are the redeemed, and we are called to be light. May it be so. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with abundant provision from your gracious hand. Accompany us in this journey that we may pass over from death to life through Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Hear this reading from Albert Rios. You are not 15 or 12 or 17. You are a hundred wild centuries and 15, bringing with you in every breath and in every step everyone who has come before you the mothers of your mother, the fathers of your father. If someone in your family tree was trouble, a hundred were not. The bad do not win, not finally, no matter how loud they are. We simply would not be here if that were so. You are made fundamentally from the good. With this knowledge, you never march alone. You are the breaking news of the century. You are the good who has come forward through it all, even if so many days feel otherwise. But think, when you as a child learn to speak, it's not that you didn't know words. It's that from the centuries you knew so many, and it's hard to choose the words that will be your own. From those centuries, we human beings bring with us the simple solutions and songs, the river bridges and star charts and song harmonies, all in service to a simple idea that we can make a house called tomorrow. What we bring finally into the new day, every day, is ourselves. And that's all we need to start. That's everything we require to keep going. Look back only for as long as you must. Then go forward into the history you will make. Be good, then better. Write books, cure disease, make us proud, make yourself proud. And those who came before you, when you hear thunder, hear it as their applause. That reminds me of those verses in Hebrews where the writer tells us that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. And as we do this, as we are the people who come upon generation upon generation, we carry that light with us into the days ahead. And now we confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvest that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us, even to the point of laying down their life. For those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick and suffering, particularly Elena, Jenna, Petra, Marilyn, Jared, Julia, Nick, Julie, Jean, Fritz, Marcella, Michael, Jack, Anne, Joanne, Sandy, Beth, Johnny, Alan, Betty, Dion, Teresa, Dottie, Tim, Henry, Mary, Greg, and Joyce, Barbara, Shelby, and the Lawrence family. For all who are in captivity of any kind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord, to you, O Lord. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Together we pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May our healing God be with you today and in all your tomorrows. May we feel God's presence as we travel this journey. May your gestures of kindness and light be well received by those on your path. May our anxieties be stilled. May your aloneness be sacrificial gift to others. May our grief be heard. 
even here, even here. May the love of God abide within your home and within the hearts of all who dwell inside. God be with you until we meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.